Hello all, welcome to Let's Tute and to get more such videos do subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. We also have courses from different subjects, do check them out on our website www.letstute.com. So let's start with today's session. Now in the last video of solutions, we looked at what are solutions, what are the various types and their properties. Now to learn a little bit more about solutions, let us carry out an activity. Let us take three beakers and label them A, B and C and fill them with 100 ml of water. In beaker A, we will add 15 grams of copper sulphate. In B, we will add 20 grams of copper sulphate. And in C, let's add 25 grams of copper sulphate. Now let us stir them nicely and let it settle for a minute. Now there are two things that we observe. The first is that all the solutions have become blue in color due to the addition of copper sulphate. And we see that the intensity of the solution in C is more than the solution in B which is more than the solution in A. This is because the amount of copper sulphate which is giving color to the solution is highest in C and least in A. Now in scientific language we can say that the solution in C is more concentrated than the solution in A and B. And the solution in B is more concentrated than the solution in A. Now there is another way of saying this that is we can also say that the solution in A is more dilute compared to the solution in B and C and the solution in B is more dilute compared to the solution in C. Thus we use the term concentrated to indicate presence of higher amount of solute in a solution and we use the term dilute to indicate presence of low amount of solute in a solution. However, please remember that the term concentrated and dilute have no meaning just by itself, that is, they are comparative terms. So whenever you say concentrated, you have to also say concentrated with respect to which solution. For example, in the earlier activity, if you say solution B is concentrated, it will make no sense because when you compare it to C, solution B is dilute. So the correct way to say this would be solution B is more concentrated compared to solution in A. Hence, whenever we use the terms concentrated and dilute, we are always making a comparison between two. Now the second thing that we observe in our activity is that in beaker A and B copper sulphate has dissolved completely while in C we find few particles of copper sulphate settled at the bottom. Now no matter how much we try to stir this solution, this little amount of copper sulphate in C will not dissolve. This is because at a given temperature any solvent has a fixed limit of how much a particular solute will dissolve in it and the water in beaker C is past this limit. A solution that has dissolved as much solute as it is capable of dissolving is said to be a saturated solution. And after a solution has become saturated, no more of the solute will dissolve at that given temperature. Thus, solution in beaker A and B are unsaturated, meaning you can further add solute to them and the solute will dissolve while the solution in C is saturated, meaning it can take no more of the solute. This amount of solute, which is present in a saturated solution at a given temperature, is called the solubility of the solvent. Now let us heat the solution in beaker C and we will see that when the temperature rises, the undissolved salt starts dissolving, meaning that solubility increases with increase in temperature. So water at 60 degrees centigrade will dissolve more solute than water at 25 degrees centigrade. Another important point to note is that solubility of different solutes are different for the same solvent. For example, at 25 degrees centigrade, 100 ml of water can dissolve 22.3 grams of copper sulphate, while at the same temperature of 25 degrees centigrade, it can dissolve 35.7 grams of sodium chloride. Hence, we can conclude that solubility depends on number one, the temperature and we have seen that higher the temperature, more the solubility and secondly, it also depends on the solute. 
that is different substances in a given solvent have different solubilities at the same temperature. Now we need to have a term to express how much of the solute and solvent is present in a given amount of solution. This term is called as concentration of a solution. And concentration of any solution can be defined as the amount of solute per the amount of solution or it can also be defined as the amount of solute per the amount of solvent. Now solutions are an integral part of a chemist's life and hence there are many ways of expressing concentration of a solution. But two methods are very common in our daily life. Now if you look around your house and you check the label of let's say a cough syrup or a Dettol solution or a floor or a bathroom cleaner at your home, you are bound to see the terms percentage W by W or percentage W by V. Now these are nothing but ways of expressing concentration. Let's look at each of them. First let's look at percentage W by W. Now this is called mass by mass percentage of a solution. And this is calculated by using the formula mass by mass percentage of a solution is equal to the mass of a solute upon the mass of a solution the whole multiplied by 100. Now it's easier and more practical to find volume of a solution than its mass. Hence the more common term that is used is percentage W by V which is mass by volume percentage of a solution and this can be expressed as mass of a solute upon volume of a solution multiplied by 100. Now to understand these terms better let us solve a problem. The solution contains 40 grams of common salt in 320 grams of water. Calculate the concentration in terms of mass by mass percentage of the solution. Now in this problem we know that common salt is the solute and water is the solvent. The mass of the solute that is the mass of the common salt is given as 40 grams and the mass of the solvent that is water is given as 320 grams. Hence to find the mass of a solution we have to add the mass of the solute and the mass of the solvent which comes as 40 plus 320 grams is equal to 360 grams. Now substituting all these values in the formula mass by mass percentage of a solution. Now substituting all these values in the given formula we get mass by mass percentage of this solution is equal to 40 grams upon 360 grams into 100 and after calculation it comes out as 11.1 percent. Now here is another problem for you to try. And once you have solved, do leave the answer to this problem in the comment section below. Alright friends, so in this video we have learned various concentration terms, that is various ways of expressing concentration of a solution. We also have courses from different subjects, do check them out on our website www.letstute.com. Well that's it for this video, if you liked it don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends and to get more such videos do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Till then keep watching, keep learning, this is me Dr. Karthik signing off.